As I told you, today we're going to finish about the writing skill. So today we're going to finish the last point that we had in the last session related to activities <coughs> to build a writing habit, right? So we were talking about some activities to do that. And finally, we are going to talk about how to respond our students' writing tasks, you know? how to give the feedback to our students when they write some test that is very important, right? It's very important. So let's start. Yeah, as we saw the last session, we were talking about the writing habit. You know? And what was it? The writing habit is when you make your students feel comfortable as writer in English. And so gaining their will in participation in more creative or extended activities. No? Notice this is how your students feel. They feel comfortable. No? As you know, most of our students don't feel good when they are asked to write something, right? So they think that it's a kind of boring activity. No, maybe they are afraid because they don't have enough vocabulary or structures, or they don't know how to write different types of this or different genres, so they don't feel comfortable. So when we talk about the writing habit, means that you would doing something, doing some activities, you make your students feel comfortable when they write in English. And so they can participate more creatively and in more extending activities. No? So this is very important to create or to develop, no? to develop this habit of writing in our students. That's why the last session we also talked about no? two different kinds of writings that we usually do in our lessons, in our classes. No? Writing for writing or writing for learning. So we have these two aspects. No? If we want to focus on the accuracy or to acquire some structures of vocabulary, so we develop some activities related to writing for learning. But if we want to make our students better writers and writing in a creative way, different genres, so we develop some activities related to writing for writing. No? So today we are going to talk about other activities that we usually use in order to develop this habit of writing. No? So remember, tasks whose principal aim is to have students writing fluently and enthusiastically, often with more spontaneity and less actual preparation than in process and general approaches. So notice here, the last classes we were talking about uh, uh, how to prepare a lesson, no? a lesson related to the writing skill, but focus on the process. No? We step some processes, we pre-teach them vocabulary, or we use some real techniques, and they have to write. So we were focused on the process. But here we're going to use other kind of activities, which purpose, which aim, no? which objective is to have our students writing fluently enthusiastically with not so much time to prepare no so they can do it spontaneously and we have two areas of habit building which are the instant writing and collaborative writing so we have these two no remember this the instant writing and the collaborative writing so we are going to focus on these two aspects, these two areas of habit building, no? the writing habit building. So, can you tell me, please, what were they? Instant writing and collaborative writing? Can you give me your ideas? How much can you remember about the last session? What is instant writing and collaborative writing? Or maybe you can write it in the chat. <clears throat> no, no. 
tell me, please, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, don't be shy. No? <laughs> it's very important for teachers not to be shy. No? What is instant writing and collaborative writing? Can you tell me? Can you tell me? Can you tell me? <coughs> I don't. I I don't remember me in uh, picture, but I think instant writing is without uh, any preparation. Preparation, so could be something uh, like natural, so like that. Yeah. So, all right, Janela. Yeah. The the name says all right. Instant. Yeah. What does it mean? Yeah. Instant. At the moment, right? Now, right now. Uh-huh, yes. Yeah, something that you do at the moment, it, spontaneously, right? You don't think too much. This is a common yeah. expression, no? you just do it. <laughs> this is yeah. the, the logo of Nike, right? Just do it. Right. <laughs> so, and collaborative uh, writing is yes, when they... Uh, work in in group with with other and supported by teacher right so yeah that's it yes you're right collaborative again the names is all right collaboration <clears throat> so it means that you are you're going to make your students uh working groups or maybe with the teacher himself or herself no so the process of writing it's going to be done not by just one person, two, three, four people together, or maybe the whole classroom. Notice here. So let's uh, check. Remember, instant writing is when students are asked to write on the spot without much preparation. Remember, without much preparation. At the moment, no, remember the expression on the spot, all right, on the spot. So at the moment, you don't give them too much time to prepare what they're going to write. So they have to do it just in a few minutes, eh? spontaneously, all right. And the other one, the collaborative writing, students learn from each other share goals and responsibility taking off the pressure <coughs> so notice here mm, sorry sorry <coughs> i have a terrible sorry so yes leslie leslie wrote something interesting in the chat not to improve their taste and made them easier that's why he says that they are taking off the pressure. No, when you ask them to write individually, so they feel the pressure. Oh, so what I'm gonna do? What I'm gonna write? Oh, I don't have any ideas. No, no. So they feel the pressure, right? To write by themselves. But when you ask them to write maybe in pairs or in groups, so they release the pressure, no? Oh yeah, oh, I don't have an idea. Do you have an idea? Yes, yes, I have idea. Oh yes, I'm Notice here, he has uh, something important too, that the students learn from each other because they can share their ideas, their own thoughts. Maybe they share also the knowledge of the language, <coughs> talking about the vocabulary or the grammatical structures. So they learn from each other. They share goals. So they share responsibilities and it leads to that they don't have too much pressure by themselves, right? They share this task. So notice these two aspects, these two areas, if we want to develop in our students the writing habit, you no, know? the instant writing and the collaborative writing. And then we talked about some activities, you no? Know? We talked about some activities in order to develop this aspect in our students. One of them was the sentence writing, dictating sentences for completion. So this is a very simple way of getting students to write creatively, is to dictate part of a sentence which they then have to complete about themselves. 
For example, we can dictate the following. Now, this is in a very simple level. My favorite time of the day is, and they need to complete about themselves. Notice about themselves. <clears throat> the best film I have ever seen is, one of the most exciting things that has ever happened to me is, so notice, they need to complete. Notice, so you just dictate the first part of the sentence and they need to complete the next part. So they start writing creatively. Yeah? My favorite time of the day is when it's sunny because I can go out to play with my friends. Yeah? Notice, they start creating, they start writing creatively and on the spot at the moment. They don't need to think too much about what they're going to write. It's a simple structures, simple vocabulary, and they talked about themselves. Notice, they talked about themselves. And here you have some ideas, no? some ideas. For example, at the end, in the last part of this session, I'm going to show you some web pages, as I usually do. You know, when we have the last session, I show you some web pages to practice, to use with your students for each skill. No? We have seen in the listening, reading, speaking, and now with the writing. And when I show you these pages, here you are going to have a lot of ideas, a lot of topic sentences that you can make your student write. No? And we call this prompts. Remember, these are called prompts. So some ideas, some things, some things, some topics that they can write about. And in this is a similar example, but in a simple way, because they just need to complete, no? They just need to complete the sentences or maybe some paragraphs, small paragraphs, because if you want them to write spontaneously so they don't have to write too much to write, because if you ask them to write maybe 200, 300 words, so they need time, <laughs> they need time. But if you want them to may write or start writing and they can gain confidence, so this is a good point to start, all right? I'd advise you to do that. And also notice that it's used also to practice the speaking skill, no? So you can transform it. If you want to pass to the other skill, no, you're not going to write it. Now you're going to tell me. So you just change the skill, no? You could use in both the skills, writing and speaking skill. But here we're focusing on the writing skill, no? The instant writing. Oh, sorry, what happened? Oh, as I told you, my computer today is a little crazy. <laughs> yeah. Let's pass to the other activity that we saw. Now we are making a feedback, just to remember. Yeah? Writing sentences. Students can be asked to write two or three sentences about a certain topic. For example, suppose the students have been working on a topic of hopes and ambitions. They can write three sentences about how they would like their lives to change in the future. So you give them a topic and you ask them to write two or three sentences. Remember, the purpose is that they write at the moment, on the spot. That's why you, you want them, or you ask them to write just short paragraphs or sentences. As I told you before, you ask them to write long text, so you need more time, right? So you choose a topic and you ask them to write about this topic. And try to make it personal. This is very important. I advise you to do that. Try to make the activity personal. They need to talk about them or write about them. That's why here it says if you're talking about how some ambitions, so you ask them to write three sentences about how they would like their lives to change in the future. Notice about their lives. If they are discussing education, they can write sentences about why exams are a good thing or a bad thing. Their own opinions, eh? what they think about exams, what are the benefits, the advantages or disadvantages, the good things or bad things. You choose a topic again and you ask them to write you know, some simple sentences 
Remember, this is just the beginning, no? To gain confidence. Remember, the purpose here is that they can gain confidence and they can feel comfortable when they are riding. Another one is the weather forecast. At the beginning of the day, the teacher asks the students to write about themselves under the day as if they were writing a weather forecast. Notice, a weather forecast. So in a weather forecast, you describe the weather, right? But now they are going to talk about them again. They are going to write about them. What's the weather like now? So the weather, notice here, the weather is the student. Are you happy, tired, listless, or energetic? Eh? Notice. So they are going to describe or they are going to write about them. Activities like this were extremely well for some students because they allowed them to be creative in an amusing and thought-provoking way. You know? So notice, like a weather forecast. You know? Today, you know, remember when you hear the weather forecast on the news, TV news, so you say, today in the south, Lima will be sunny and dry, you know, 30 Celsius degrees. So a kind of similar test, but about them. You know? Today I feel good because, you know, so they start writing, you know, similar to a weather forecast, you know? describing some emotions. How do they feel? You know? That's why I hear the question, you know, what's the weather like now? So the weather, as I told you, is referring to the student. You know? You have to tell them that the weather is you. So you have to tell me how you feel, all right? Another thing that we could use is music, no? We were talking about this part, the last, the last part of the session, no? Music can be a very effective way to stimulate a writing activity since it often provokes strong feelings and ideas. Choosing the right music is vitally important. Much of the best music for writing purposes, notice, for writing purposes, is instrumental. We don't want the students to be distracted by listening of words. So notice the kind of music that we are going to use. Instrumental. No with lyrics. No with voices. Eh? Notice here. Because we, want, we don't want them to be distracted by hearing or listening out the words. No? We are going to use music to provoke ideas, thoughts. And these ideas and these thoughts are going to be written on a paper. And this is the, the purpose of music here. That's why he says, for writing purpose. On the contrary, we want the music to speak to them directly. We need music they can respond to. So they are going to respond to the music. They are going to have an interaction with the music. So they listen to a piece of music, extract the music, and they are going to start writing. For example, words. One activity is to play a piece of music and have students write out any words that come into their heads as they listen. Any emotive piece of music will do for this. Or you can use music for films. You know? As you know, films have some soundtracks, you know, what we call the soundtracks. So most of the time, this kind of music is instrumental. You know, to give a background, you know? to give a background to the, to the um, a scene. So a kind of similar we're going to use in our class. This music is going to be as a background that makes our students write something. So as you can see here, they're going to listen a piece of music and they are going to write any words that come into their heads as they listen. What kind of words could you imagine if you listen this kind of music? Eh? Notice here, when a students have written down the words which the music has suggested to them, they can share their words with the rest of the class 
to see how others have reacted. Oh, remember, students are different, so they can react differently to the music. Maybe for some students, the music is a kind of sad, so they write sad, you know, depressing, you know, not energetic, but other things, no, I think it's, it's not sad. It's a thrill, you no, know, suspense. And so they can react in different ways. That's why at the end, when they finish writing down the words, so they can share their words, you no? Know? to check how others have reacted to this music. Okay? Words. So you start with this, words. Another one, you know, for more uh, level students, uh, what is the composer describing? Students are told that in the piece or pieces of music, they are about to hear the composer is trying to describe something specific. As they listen to the music, they should write down whatever they hear in the music. When they have finished, they can read out what they have written or show it to their classmates. The teacher can then say what the music was intended to describe. So here, oh, sorry. So here you have uh, more details. No? Your students are going to write uh, more details related to the music, not just words. Now they are going to write, notice here, they are going to write whatever they could hear from the music. But remember, you explained them that they are going to hear a music and the composer, the composer of the music is trying to describe something specific. Something specific. And at the end, they again share their ideas and they can share their ideas by showing the or reading aloud this uh, test or part of maybe your lines, and then the teachers um, make a feedback, no? Checking, yeah, yes, you were right. This is the purpose. This is the description. This is what the composer wants to describe in this piece of music. So they check the information together. Eh? So notice here, this is another kind of activity that we could use with music. How does it make me feel? Teacher can play students' musical excerpts and get them to write their reactions as they listen. They can be given prompts, which will help them to do this, such as. What color do you think the music is? Notice, matching with the colors. Where would you most like to hear it? Who would you like to have with? You, when you do that, when you listen to this kind of music. Oh. <clears throat> eh? Notice feelings, emotions, and they are going to write about these feelings or emotions, reactions, and you give some things, some prompts in order to describe their feelings and emotions. Using this example, these questions, huh? what color do you think the music is? Where would you most like to hear it? Who would you like to have with you when you do that or when you listen to this certain music? So they are talking about their reactions. Right? They are writing about their reactions right? using music. But remember, it's preferable to use instrumental music because they could be distracted with the lyrics, right? Musical stories. The teacher dictates the first line of a story. A student should continue the story when the music starts. Students then hear a piece of music which is particularly nostalgic or sad or frenetic. Students write a story based on some music, but this time a contrasting piece of music is played. Then, they show them to colleges who then read out one of the stories. The class have to decide which bit of music it was written to. Right? Notice, now they are going to write stories. The teacher dictates, notice, the teacher dictates 
the first line of the story and they need to continue the story but by listening to the music they hear they listen to the music and they continue the story that's why here it says students write the story based on some music and also here you have another part if you have enough time, so you can give them the opportunity to listen to another excerpt of music, a contrasted piece of music, and maybe they change the story. Eh? Notice here. And then the class have to decide which bit of music it was written to. For example, I use, as I told you the last class, I use this kind of activity, yeah? but I use it just to write a story, you know, because of the time. Because <laughs> if you use the second part, Oof, we're going to be long, no? So I used just the first part. I wrote the first line of the story, and then I made him to listen to some kind of music. And with this music, they need to continue the story. And then I made him to work in pairs, no? To join these stories and create a new one. And that's it. Notice, I use music to make my students write something. But as I told you, it's preferable to use music with no lyrics, no voices, not just sounds. Instrumental preferable, all right? Another way to make our students write on the spot, using pictures. Describing pictures. Now, this is a very common activity that we usually use. No? We give uh, our students some pictures and they need to describe them. We could make them describe the pictures orally or here in a written way. One way of getting students to write about pictures is simply to ask them to write a description of one. If you give them a complex picture and a time limit, they have to write quickly to get down as much information as they can. No? So you can give them a time limit, no? a time limit. Yeah. I'm going to give you some pictures and you have to describe those pictures. But in five minutes, no more. And they have to write quickly. No? Write as much as you can. And then you start writing. No? Maybe as a contest, or you can make them work in pairs or in groups. I don't know. So you can make this activity in different ways. And it makes this activity more exciting, no? More exciting, like a competition, like a game, like a contest. So the student or groups or peer have finished this at five minutes, then we are going to check out who wrote more or well, no, then you can make the feedback, no? For example, I use this kind of activity, but as in groups, in groups. I gave them some pictures and postcards to my students and they have to write, you know, as many sentences as they can, no? This is very common, no? For example, in order to describe a house or a room, no? Using there is, there are, no? and use uh, any, some, no? <clears throat> so, yeah, write as many sentences as you can. Five minutes, and they start writing in a, in a wool chart, no, cardboard. S yeah, five minutes, yeah, stop. Now, stick your papers, your wool charts on the board, and then you check together, no? All the groups check together. Yeah, how many sentences? First group, how many sentences? Ten sentences, yeah. Second group, eight sentences, okay. Yeah, third group, six sentences. Yeah, now we are going to check how well they are written. Yeah, one, two, three. Oh, no. From 10 sentences, you just got seven sentences correct. But the other eight sentences, but the, the eight sentences were correct. Yeah, the winner is the second group. Eh? Notice, they start describing pictures, no? many different topics you no know? you can use many different pictures and they can work together eh? they can work together so this activity of writing is not 
boring, it's exciting because it's like a contest, not like a competition. And students like doing that. No? The other one is write a postcard. We can give a students postcard scenes and then ask them to write a postcard, which they would expect to write to an English speaking friend from such a location. So they are going to write postcards, no simple, simple test. No? When you write a postcard, it's a simple test. So you can do it at the moment. No? You can do it on the spot. So you give them some postcard scenes and you ask them to write a postcard to an English speaking friend and they start writing, all right? For example, then at the end, I'm going to show you again other web pages that you could use to do this interactively using that web page. And then I'm going to show you that. For example, we might show students photos of people in holiday locations, and then they write a postcard which those people will write, right? So you just show them pictures, yeah? photos of people in holiday locations, and they are asked to write postcards which those people will write, okay? So you have another idea, no? Using pictures, using photos, photographs. Another one is this part we haven't seen it, uh, we didn't see the last session, writing poems. A basic poem, no? Because remember, it's not a liter literature class, no? One of the most common basic poems is acrostic poems, no? Or alphabet poems. An acrostic poem is one where the first letters of each line, when read downwards, form a word. For example, here we have beach, beach, this is the acrostic, no? B, blue sea, sunshine and waves. E, easy days. A, afternoons of heat and playfulness. C, charm on summer and year of the storm. H, home and the each of sand. Just a simple poem, an acrostic poem using the first letter of the word, no? Or maybe like an alphabet. A is for arms chair that make me comfortable. B is for butter that I spread on my bread. C is for the children that love. Notice here, you have the letters of the alphabet. And they start writing poems in an acrostic way. No? Or just simple words from basic levels, so you just use words. A, actors, B, business women, C, chemist. Maybe you're working with jobs. You're working with jobs and you start. No, this is, for example, this is a, a kind of similar to this uh, famous game that is called uh, Tutti Frutti, no? But you just play with one letter, no? One letter and you write um, different categories, no? Just with one letter. A kind of similar is this, that they are going to write, for example, about any topic, no? Jobs. For example, this is related to jobs. Yeah. Write words related to jobs using five letters of the alphabet. Oh, yeah. With A. Yeah, the five letters of the other, the first five letters, so the ten, fi the ten first letters of the alphabet. And they start writing, no? Just words. Notice, just words. If you have more advanced level students, so you can ask them to write more details, no? More details. Actors, maybe to describe, no? Actors, stars on films, no? Business women working enterprises, describing, eh? describing them, the, the jobs, no? And they are writing like a poem, no? like a poem in an acrostic way. Another one is the stem or frame poems. Many teachers give a student sentence or phrases, stems or frames for them to complete, and which when completed, makes something that is almost a poem. We can give a student some frame like this. Notice, I like because, I like because, I like because, 
but I hate because. Notice you give them a frame. This is called a frame, a stem, you know, some fixed phrases. And with these phrases, they can create poems. You know? I like football because it's exciting. I like eating spaghetti because it's my favorite food. I like watching films because they are <clears throat> funny. But I hate doing homework because it's tiring. Hmm? They start writing poems, simple poems. And you give them stems, frames, right? We call this stems, frames. So you give them some fixed expressions, not fixed phrases. For example, here you're using or you're reinforcing the conjunctions, no? Because, but, and also the expression that we use to talk about likes and dislikes, no? I like, I hate, eh? notice. And you give them the opportunity to write in a funny way, no? Not like paragraphs or T's, no? With numbers, no. Just to think about themselves and write like a poem. And maybe you can give them an example and they, they're going to read uh, their poems aloud with intonation no, that the poems have. No, I like football because it's very exciting. I like eating a spaghetti because it's delicious. And notice the intonation of a poem is so funny too, and they could be cut by this intonation. No? This is another example, no? I like apples because they keep the doctor away. I like oranges because they taste fresh. I like pineapples because they look interesting. But I hate bananas because they're yellow. And so this is like an example. So they start writing now, at the moment with some ideas. They don't need to think too much. No? What they think at the moment on the spot. And notice you could use this stem or frame. Remember, we call this stem or frame poems. Now, we finished talking about the instant writing activities. Notice the previous activities were related to the instant writing activities. So your students are asked to write something on the spot at the moment, spontaneously, all right? With just a, uh, some time to write about this, not too much time. Now we're going to pass to the other aspect in order to develop their writing habits in our students, that is the collaborative writing. As we have seen before, collaborative writing is related when your student is asked to write together and they can learn from each other, they share goals, they share responsibilities, and the pressure of writing by themselves is lost or is less, right? One way to develop this kind of activity is using the board. Sentence by sentence. This is an activity that I think that you use in your classes. Students are asked to build up a letter in reply to an invitation on the board, sentence by sentence. Remember that we have seen before, no? In the last sessions. When you show a letter, then you start analyzing the letter, and then you divide the board in two, no, in two columns, yes or no, and they start writing the letter sentence by sentence, no, in group, the whole class, the whole class start writing the letter. Yeah, in this column, maybe you're gonna write in a formal, and in the in the next column in an informal way. So the differences are shown here, right? The address the person you're going to write to, the title, you know, some expression just in the body or the content of the letter, and the ending is different too. So they're going to write this sentence by sentence on the board. Each time a new student goes up to the board in such activities, the rest of the class or the group that a student represents can help by offering suggestions corrections, or alternatives. Hmm? Notice here. So they participate. The whole class participate. That's why here's this collaborative writing. 
So they are not going to do it by themselves. And we are going to use the board to do that, not on a piece of paper, on the board. So all the students can see what they are going to write. And that's why he says that they can uh, help by offering suggestions, corrections, or alternatives. Another activity using the board. Dicto gloss. I don't know if you have heard about this activity. The teacher uses their own words to tell the students the story. The first time they hear the story, students are told just to listen and not to make notes. Notice here, they just listen. They don't write. No, because the common dictation is you... Uh, dictate something, a sentence or a phrase, and they immediately start writing, right? So this is a usual dictation. But here, no. They just first listen. Just listen. They don't write anything, all right? So here it says, the first time they hear the story, students are told just to listen and not to make notes. In pairs, the students now discuss what they have heard and try to establish the main facts of the story. The teacher tells them to hear the story again and they should make notes. Eh? After the first listening, so now the teacher groups, no, groups the classroom. Yeah, you two, you three. Now check your ideas. Check the main facts of the story. And then you know, the teacher is telling to hear the story again and they should make notes. Now they start writing. Now they will be able to concentrate not only in the facts, but also the language. At the beginning, they focus on the facts, the story, you know, the ideas of the story, because they just listen. Oh, yeah, it's a story about a woman. Uh, she lost in the darkness. Oh, she was afraid. All right. Yeah, because she saw a strange man following her. She tried to hide in a house. Yeah. So this is the ideas. Eh? Then they are grouped. Eh? They are grouped. They are asked to share their facts. And then they are going to listen to the story for a second time. And now they start writing. They start writing some notes. So here it says that now don't just concentrate on the facts, but also the language. Let me show you a video related to a dictogloss activity, right? This is not like a story, just some simple sentences or phrases. Watch. activity with a twist. Yeah. It's a great one to get the students concentrating and really helps them to focus on a particular language point. The model sentences from the Gateway Grammar Guides are ideal to use. We're going to do an activity now which is like a dictation, okay, but it's a little bit different. I am going to dictate one long sentence to you. But it's important, when I dictate the sentence, you cannot write anything. Okay, notice here. So the teacher explains, you know, tells the students that they are going to listen a sentence, a long sentence, but they are not going to write anything. Just listen. When I finish, you have to try and remember what I said. It might be difficult, but don't worry, because we'll do it more than once. Okay, so let's see how much you remember. You ready? Although I've already been to the United States twice, I haven't visited Hollywood yet, despite the fact that I'm mad about films. Go. See what you can remember. It's a good idea to try to reduce the panic factor which is one of the major difficulties that students have when they do listening exercises. Right, um, we're going to do the same thing again. So pen down, I'll repeat the sentence, and again, look at your sentence. Can you make it better? 
Okay, or is it perfect already? Ready? Although I've already been um, to the United I States, I would like a volunteer. The volunteer is has an easy job because the volunteer doesn't have to think much; they just write. Who wants to be the volunteer? Irene, do you want to come? And you, so you don't need your piece of paper, because what is going to happen now is you, as a class, you are going to dictate to Irene, and she will write whatever you say. If you think um, Irene has made a mistake or something, you can tell her. Okay. Um, who would like to help? Who would like to begin dictating to Irene? Daniel. Uh, also, I have been twice. Uh, you have to write already uh, between, half and, between bean. half and bean. Here. Yes. The sentence I'm using here was chosen so that students would focus on yet and already with the present perfect and also the linker despite. And you'll notice how well the task makes them focus on this language. It stays, but I haven't visited. What do you think? This is a democratic decision. I think no. there's only a comma. But is for a contrast, isn't it? One of the and nice features of this activity is that the whole class work contrast. together and help each yeah, other okay, to come so up with maybe, the final answer. I don't know, we'll check at the end, but maybe if you have although and but, it's two, the two words are similar. Um, are we happy? We're happy with this sentence? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's have a look. Thank you, Irene. Right, um, despite now, this is to introduce a contrast. And in fact, the expression that I said is despite the fact. Actually, here, so I would suggest dictating the sentence one last time the and let the class check the final answer that okay. way. So there is a contrast there. We followed this activity by examining the difference in use between already and yet with the present perfect. Because the students have been memorising the sentence and concentrating hard on it, they really focused on the grammar and structure of the sentence and on spelling. One of the reasons I like this activity so much is that it provides us with language work, listening, writing and speaking all in the one task. All right, so what do you think of this activity? Oh, yeah, Cindy wrote something interesting. What do you think? Tell me your ideas about this dictogloss. It's not a usual dictation, no? It's not a usual dictation. What do you think about this activity? Teacher, it's very interesting because we put um, uh, uh, in activity all the kind of uh, activity that are important to English, listening, writing, all, all the activities used in, in this exercise. Uh -huh, yes, and the teacher mentions at the end, no? This activity involves not just writing, no? Listening, speaking, because they are going to give their uh, suggestions, no? Or correcting. So notice, that's why he has this collaborative writing, one student is the volunteer to write, so this person is not going to think about the sentence, it's just the writer, <laughs> it's just the writer. So the classroom, the other students are going to dictate her, no? because it was a girl, and they are going to start uh, telling her, no? they started telling her what they wrote by themselves. No, Some of them wrote some words that others haven't written, so they can check together at the end. The teacher, notice, what is the role of the teacher here? Is to reinforce at the end, no? The teacher is going to reinforce. Notice here the task. So what was the purpose of the teacher here? To reinforce some expressions and conjunctions despite the fat, no, but, or some punctuation marks, but also the grammatical structures, no? Present perfect, using the already, we yet. Eh? Notice here, you can practice a lot of things, eh? a lot of things in this activity called dictogloss. Yeah, Lucy, working groups is important. Yeah, that's right. That's what I name, no? These kind of activities. Collaborative writing, no? Collaborative writing. 
I know that maybe these kind of activities are going to take long time. No, but it's advisable to do. No, it's advisable to Teacher, do. Valeria. Yes. Can I give my uh, my opinion? Yes. Yeah. My opinion about 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 the video. Uh -huh. I I think it's very interesting the way that the teacher used used this technique for develop the student's brain. Yeah, that's good, Valeria. Yes, you're right. You're right. No, so it's very important, as I told you, to create this kind of interaction. No, to create this kind of interaction, as I told you. It's going to be a long time, yeah, maybe more than a time that you <laughs> expected, but it's going to be so helpful for your students. You are not losing time, all right? You are not losing time because it makes your students create it, have it a right thing. No? Remember, the purpose is that they can feel comfortable. They can feel writing exciting, not boring. Uh, this is very mm -hmm. important. Yes, teacher. And I think uh, it's a very few teachers that give this technique or use this technique in classes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and I understand because some teachers are worried, no? Oh, teacher, we don't have enough time, so we have just a reduced time, and we have to follow some uh, uh, curriculums, no? And we have to follow some topics to develop structures. And yes, I know, I know. But try to combine. No? There are some times that you can omit some parts, and you can do these activities in the class, and you can make your students gain confidence when they write. No, it's very important to do that. So notice, this is the famous dictogloss. Remember, dictogloss. And there are a lot of activities using the dictogloss. These are the simple structures. So for example, in the um, previous slide, they use the teacher uses dictogloss to write a story. So it's a longer, no? it's longer. Here on this video, the teacher just wrote sentence, a long sentence, no? A long sentence. So you cannot equate. According to the level of your students, you can adequate it, all right? Now, let's pass to another one. Writing in groups or pairs. <coughs> Rewriting and expanding sentences. This is another activity to make your students work in groups or in pairs. Students are presented with a stereotypical statement and asked to amend it to reflect the opinions of the group. This provokes discussion not only about a topic, but also about how to write a consensus opinion appropriately. The students are then presented with some examples of stereotypical statements, like this on the topic of gender differences. Notice you give them some stereotypes, no? Stereotypes. And they're going to discuss about these stereotypes. For example, this is related to gender differences. Boys like football, girls like shopping. And this is a stereotype, no? Because this stereotype has changed a lot nowadays, no? Nowadays, girls like football too, and they play football professionally too, all right? So this stereotype has this changing. So notice they start discussing, all right? They start discussing and they are going to write a consensus opinion appropriately. Girls like shopping, but nowadays also likes buying a lot of things. No? The difference between maybe, I think, according to my point of view, the difference is that boys like shopping, but mostly online, no? using the internet, but girls like shopping, going to the shops, not to the malls, I think so, no? But nowadays, boys and girls like shopping, right? So notice, they start discussing, they start writing, and at the end, they write a consensus opinion appropriately. So you give them, no? you give them some topics, and they're going to write about it in groups, no? In groups, remember, or pairs. Another center writing activity is to take a sentence and put far more detail on it, into it. 
For example, we can give a students a short sentence like this. Two women saw the men. So the students then have to expand, notice, they have to expand the sentence with as many words as possible. Notice here, this is at the end. <laughs> this is the final result. From the woman saw the man, so notice how they could expand it. When the pale red-headed woman, notice, the woman, now when the pale red-headed woman who had arrived not less than an hour early than the time they had agreed on the night before, so this is the bird, now the man, the tall burden man leaning and happily against a poster advertising a new perfume which had just been launched onto the market. She knew at once that, notice a very simple sentence now was written as a long, complex sentence, adding adjectives, eh? adding some details. No? The woman, oh yeah, the pale red-headed woman. Now, some details, some actions related to the woman who had arrived not less than an hour earlier than the time they had agreed on the night before. Notice this is a close, no? You expanded a simple close, the woman, you expand it into a compound complex close. No, this is called a compound complex close. Then we have the other, the man. Again, the man now is the tall burden man. And then you write something related to the activities that this man uh, had done, no? Leaning happily against a poster, advertising a new perfume which had just been launched into the market. Notice the simple sentence was expanded. Eh? It was expanded. All right. So it's very important to practice this in our students, no? To expand their vocabulary, you know? And they can use more words, not just simple sentences. Story circle. This is another activity. Students in a group sitting in a circle. Each student has a blank sheet of paper in front of them. The teacher dictates a sentence. For example, once upon a time, a beautiful princess lived in a castle by a river. They write it at the top of their piece of paper. Each student is told to write the next sentence of the story. They pass their piece of paper to the left, and each student writes the next sentence of the story they now have in front of them, which is different from the one they started with. Notice, notice here, this is a story circle. So all of them have a sheet of paper in front of them, and this teacher dictates a sentence, a start a sentence. Here you have like a story, no? That you're going to write a story. Once upon a time, a beautiful princess lived in a castle by a river. So they write this sentence at the top of the paper. And then each student is going to write a next sentence of the story. Just a sentence. And after that, they are going to pass the paper to the other student on the left. And now this student is going to add another sentence to the story. But it was different from what they, was, uh, they were asked to uh, write first, right? Because they change papers. So he needs or she needs to think in other ideas, all right? Because he was thinking in one idea because uh, they start writing one sentence. But now he received or he or, he or she received Another idea, another sentence. So they need to think again, no? They need to think again. And in order to make this uh, like a competition, so you can give them a uh, limit time, no? One minute, yeah. You still have the clock here, one minute, then they need to write at the moment, fast, giving some ideas and pass to the partner, no? After some minutes, the activity is done. And so they can check the story together. Okay? Notice this is the, the story circle and the story circle.
this is an example. No, this is an example of this kind of a story. Notice different letters, no different writings. Once upon a time, for example, maybe the first student didn't write that first sentence well, so the other student can correct it. Once a time, no, no, once upon a time, a beautiful princess, oh, the spelling is not correct, live in a castle by a river. She was very clever. She always read and studied. And the other student, however, she hasn't seen the George's nature around her where she was living. She had a stepmother. He hated her very much. Another student noticed the letter is different. She had a lovely dog. It was very loyalty. One day, her stepmother bought a basket of red apples from the local market. Another student noticed this story was written by many students, not just one. Yeah, like a circle, all right? Like a circle, okay? Story reconstruction. We use the G-saw technique. No students are divided into, say, four groups, A, B, C, and D. Each group is given one of these set of pictures which they have to talk about and memories as many details of as possible. So you have this, yeah, like a G-saw, right? So G-saw, remember, they have to reconstruct order the pictures. The pictures are then taken away. Students are now regrouped so that each new group has a student from the original groups A, B, C, and D. So you change your student. The students are changed. First, they start in one group and they, they are changed to another group. They need to remember the pictures, you know? this, the, the order of the pictures. In their new groups, Students have to work out a sequence for the four pictures and then create a written test which tells the story of the sequence. This activity works well. It provokes a lot of discussion, which in turn gets the students to write with enthusiasm. And remember, oh, yeah. this is the reconstruction, yeah, the story reconstruction using the GSAW technique. Um, another one, pen polls, emails, and live chat. Teachers have always encouraged students to correspond with pen polls from different towns or countries. This is significantly easier a more immediate with email exchanges between key polls or mouse polls. No? So you may then to write some short tests simulating that they are writing to a pen poll or they are writing in a live chat. No? You can hear one example. No, this is a simulated email exchange between intermediate students. No? So to link from cardinal subject, weekend plans, and they start writing and they respond. And then the other responds, no? like a flow chart, all right? So you use this and you make your students interact. They start writing collaboratively, okay? writing emails, writing in a live chat. No? You simulate, eh? you simulate this environment. Okay, so with all these activities, we finished talking about um, the aspect, you know, remember the areas that we need to develop in our students. You know, there is the instant writing and the collaborative writing you know, to develop the writing habit in our students. It means that they can write in a comfortable way, you know, in a comfortable way and creatively. This is very important, all right? Okay. Now, let's pass to the final point related to this skill. Here now we're going to talk about how to respond, correct, and guide your students when they write something. Let's see. Tell me, what do you have in your mind when you see these two words? Responding and correcting. Are they similar? 
Are they different? What do you think? Responding and correcting. Do you have an idea? What is responding and what is correcting? Can you tell me? Can you tell me? No, no, no. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Responding and correcting. You can write it in the chat. Remember, you can write it in the chat too. No, 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 nobody, nobody. Responding and correcting. Teacher, it's a piece of writing. It's a way to assist, so maybe, for yeah. example, where we, are, where we are in the chat. Yeah, to assist. No, you mentioned the word assist, right? Yes, yes, to assist, yes. Uh huh. All right, all right. Both of them? Both of them are relating to assist our students. Let's analyze the word, no? Respond. What does it mean respond in general term? To react, no? Respond is to react to something, right? So if a person tells me something, also I'm going to respond. If a person does something, I'm going to respond. No? Cause and effect. <laughs> this is the general law. Cause and effect. If you do something, there is a reaction, not the physical law. <laughs> so respond is to react to something. And correct. What is correct? To check, no? To check if it is right or wrong, no? We are talking about in general terms. No? Try to make these ideas no? to general terms. Now, then we are going to pass it to the writing skills. So respond, react. You respond to your uh, students, to your students' writing tests. And correct. So it means that you check, you analyze, all right? You analyze. So notice here. Responding is discussing the student's writing rather than judging it. The accuracy can be evaluated, but so should the content and design of the writing. Now, notice here. Discuss your student's writing rather than judging it. You don't judge. You can evaluate it. Yeah? The accuracy can be evaluated, but also the content and design of the writing. You just don't focus on the accuracy. You can focus on other aspects, that is the content and the design of the writing. So this is responding. Notice, responding is your reaction to your uh, student's writing, but not to judge it to analyze, to relate, but not just the accuracy, the content and the design. Correcting, fixing, notice, fixing the syntax, grammar, and word choice mistakes in the writing. And this is what we usually do, right? When we analyze the test or when we prove read, remember this term, prove read, when you read your students' uh, writing tasks, to check it, to validate it. So generally, we do the second part, right? Generally, most of the time, when we analyze a test, a written task, so we analyze the syntax, if the sentences were, uh, were written, you know, with the correct tense, with the correct spelling, if they use the appropriate vocabulary, 
So you analyze this. It means that you are correcting, right? Notice the difference between responding and correcting. In responding, you react to your student's writing, but you analyze not just the accuracy of the test, but also the content and the design of the writing. On the other side, correcting is just fixing. Notice, fixing or mending the syntax, grammar, and word choice mistakes. So you're focused on the mistakes. Ah, oh, no, this is wrong. X. This is not correct. Oh, here, omitted a letter. Ah. So this is correcting. You're correcting. But try to respond to, to the test. Let's see here how we can do that. Ways of correcting a student's work. Selective correction. We do not have to correct everything. Notice when we have a written test, it's not necessary to correct everything, every single word. No, we could correct only vertences or only punctuation or focus instead exclusively on word order. So you choose, notice, you choose what things to correct. And it makes your checking, your correcting, not so time consuming, no? because in, when you try to uh, check the writing of your students, so you need a lot of time, no? You need a lot of time. It's not so easy to create the writing test. Sometimes, sometimes this is one of the reasons that we uh, don't ask our students to write too long sentences or paragraphs or uh, stories, no? Because it takes time. But we can make this correction easier by choosing just some aspects. For example, you ask them to write a story. Yeah. So your focus. Your correction, yeah, I'm going to check just the tense. If they use the correct tense, past simple, past progressive, or past perfect, or past continuous, no? Just the tense. Maybe they have other spelling mistakes or punctuation, but at that point, it's not important. You just check that. We might only correct paragraph organization or the use of appropriate levels of formality. If we are going to employ a selective approach, students need to know about it. So you need to explain, yeah, in this test, I'm going to check the things. If you're going to write a story, the things, or maybe the story, but I'm going to check the sequence of words. No? First, then, after that, eventually, then, finally. So you're going to check this and notice. Or maybe if you're asked them to write a letter, yeah, I'm going to check the organization. Remember, the first paragraph, you have to write about it. The second paragraph, you have to write about it. The third paragraph, you have to write about it. So the organization of the test. Maybe the student makes some mistakes on the spelling, the grammar. It's not important. And that time, that time. So notice you select your correction because sometimes as a teacher we try to correct everything no <laughs> everything no no this is a mistake here in the spelling no no here's a mistake and he forgot to write the s of the present symbol oh here he for so you write you correct everything that's why it is time consuming right for 30 40 students oof, you're gonna have a lot of time <laughs> checking or correcting the writing test so Try to be selective, and it's going to make it easier. And your students are going to be focused. Right? If you ask, if you tell them, I'm going to correct the spelling, I'm going to correct the punctuation, I'm going to correct the tense, I'm going to, the students are going to be stressed. <laughs> if you're going to tell them that you're going to correct everything, oh, no, this teacher is tough. But if you say, no, just this, just this, just this, Ah, the face release. Oh, oof, yeah. 
just the tenses. Okay, so they are focused on the tenses. Oh, just the punctuation. Ah, okay. So I'm going to change my punctuation marks. So they are focused. Eh? They are focused on what they are going to write, specific things in the writing task. So this is a good opportunity to select. Remember, select. Using marking scales. This is one of the things that we usually do, right? Many teachers just arrange a different marking scales when correcting written work and written test. This means that some students may fall down on, say, grammar. They can still perhaps do well in the way they answer a task or in their use of vocabulary. Teachers may want to give marks out of 10 for each category they have chosen for students. No grammar, vocabulary, coherence, or cohesion. So we call this the famous rubrics, no? the famous rubrics. So here you have the grammar, yeah, four, three, two, one, vocabulary, four, three, two, one. At the end, you sum up and you got 20. No, so, but they have the opportunity, oh yeah, if I'm not good at grammar, maybe I'm good at vocabulary or coherence or cohesion. So they have the opportunity to answer well in other aspects of the writing, no? not just in the grammar or just the vocabulary. So they have the opportunity to do that. No? Using correction symbols. In order to avoid an overabundance of red ink, <laughs> many teachers use correction symbols. These also have the advantage of encouraging the students to think about what the mistake is so that they can correct it themselves using the symbols. Notice, you use, um, again, you must explain it, you know, because if this can see symbols on the test, but what do they mean? What does this symbol mean? I don't know. So you must explain it now. For example, now this is an example. You can create your own symbols too. Yeah? Correction symbols. For example, the letter S represent a spelling error. W-O, a mistake in word order. G, a grammar mistake. T, wrong verb tense. C, concord mistake, subject and verb agreement, no? This line, no, the, like an inverted Y, something that has been left out. So you omit something, you need to add something. No, look at example, he told that he was sorry. WW, wrong word. I'm interested in, oh, no, I'm interested in just music. Brackets, something that's not necessary. The symbol, the question mark and the M, the meaning is unclear. That is a very excited photograph. So the meaning is not clear. Letter P, a punctuation mistake. Dear London, oh, what happened? The question mark. F slash I, too formal or informal. Eh? Hi, Mr. Franklin. Thank you for your letter. Hi is not correct, right? Hi is not correct. Here is a formal letter. So, good morning, good afternoon. So, here, notice, you can manage the symbols. As I told you, you can create your own symbols, but it's very important to explain to your students when they receive, when they have their test back, so they can understand the symbols. No? If you don't explain them, so they are going to be confused and they can correct themselves. Oh, yeah, the teacher wrote here a spelling error. Oh, let's see. Oh, yes, the answer is obvious. Yeah, the answer. I the, the, the order of the letter is incorrect and in obvious, I omit a, a letter. Oh, yeah. Oh, W-O. Oh, what order? I like very much it. Oh, no, I like it very much. No, ah, the order. Okay, okay. So they can understand these symbols and they can correct by themselves. And so it's very important to have these kind of correction symbols. Reformulation. It's a way of showing students how they can write something more correctly. Instead of asking them to find a mistake and correct it, the teacher shows 
how he or she would write the incorrect sentence. The student then learns by comparing correct and incorrect versions. Reformulation is extremely useful during drafting and redrafting. So they are going to reformulate the sentences. Instead of telling them, this is incorrect, no, this is not correct, this is incorrect, this is a mistake. So you give them the opportunity to have more options. No? How would it be the correct sentence? All right. So they compare the correct and incorrect and reformulate the sentence. And he says that this is very important or this is very useful in the drafting and redrafting stages. No? Remember when we talked about the stages, the process of writing. No? Drafting is your first written test. No? When you put your ideas into the paper and start writing sentences and paragraphs, this is your drafting. Redrafting, maybe when you ask them to reformulate, to correct something, and they start writing the sentences again. Mm -hmm. This is the redrafting. Another one is the remedial teaching. When teachers read a student's written work and they come across mistakes, which many people in the same class are making, remedial teaching will then be necessary. In such cases, correction can be effected by showing the whole class sentences produced by the students that exemplify the mistake and asking them to help to put them right. It's a good idea for the sample mistakes to be anonymous so that no individual students feel set up to ridicule. No, this is very important. It's very important. You say, oh, yeah, Carlos wrote these sentences in an incorrect way. And you show <laughs> the sentences in the board. No, no, no. Because you know where students are so funny. They like to make jokes, tricks. So no, it would be anonymous. No? So you choose a sentence that you can notice that most of the students have made a mistake. So you choose one of these from any student and you write it on the board and you ask your students to help you correct that sentence together. Eh? Notice now here that checking is not just given by the teacher. The students are doing it too. But remember, try to do this anonymously and with no names, no students' names. This is very important. This is called remedial teaching. Responding to work in progress. When students are involved in a writing task in class, especially where there is a part of a process sequence, teachers will often visit the students and talk to them about what they are writing. Notice this is responding, not correcting, responding. We may ask what a certain sentence means or wonder why they have started a composition in a particular way or suggest that they recheck some information they have made notes about. Eh? Respond. The teacher is responding, giving some ideas, some suggestions, not just telling, no, this is not correct, no, correct, no, this is not, no. You give some ideas, some explanations, you can give them meanings, right? So they could start a composition no? in a particular way. No, oh no, I think maybe you can start in another way your letter. Be careful with that topic, the message. Eh? Notice you're not telling, no, this sentence is incorrect, the grammar, you forget the S, the spelling. No, notice is different, right? The evaluation is different. And it's mostly done in the work in progress writing, when they are writing, right? Correcting is when they finish writing. Responding most of the time is in the while, huh? in the while writing process. Responding by written comment. The response is delivered in written form when the student hands us a draft of what they are working on. Notice a draft, the first writing test. <laughs> Write down what we think is good in the student's work. 
Here you have written responses to a student's work, no? I enjoyed your draft composition very much. I like the description of your grandparents. They sound like interesting people. In some ways, they are the most interesting part of your story. I have one or two suggestions to make. How about starting the composition with that description of your grandparents' house? It would be a good way into the topic. I wouldn't include the bit about your sister and the dog. It gets in the way of your story. Notice, you are giving to the students some ideas, some suggestions, how to improve the written test. But this is on the draft. Remember, on the draft. So you give a response to your student. And you are responding to your students by using a written comment. No, you are responding by using a written comment. In the previous ones, it was an oral comment. No, in the class, no? you start talking to them and giving them some ideas, some suggestions. Now, this is in a written when they give you your, the first draft. No, give me your first draft. Yeah. And then you give that the draft and they can correct some ideas, some points. Post-task statements. At the end of a writing sequence, however long or short, teachers usually end up giving final comments. This is the post-task statements. No? You just give them the final comments no? at the end, no? at the end of a writing sequence. The other one is tapped comments. If teachers cannot give face-to-face -face feedback, maybe because of the time, they might well considered tapping their comments about a piece of a student's writing. This has the advantage for some of allowing them to be more expansive than written responses sometimes are. No? So you tap their comments, a piece of a student writing. No? So if you don't have the opportunity to give face-to-face -face feedback. No? Electronic comments. A lot of feedback can now be given by electronically, either by email or through text editing programs for the growing number of students who have access to computers and do their writing via keyboard. Feedback of this kind is extremely useful. Nowadays, because of technology, we can give a feedback to our students using programs, using emails or chats. We have a lot of ways to give the feedback or to respond to our students' work. Peer review. This is another one. Peer review is a valuable element in the writing process. It has the advantage of encouraging students to work collaboratively, something which in a group we want to foster. It also gets around the problem of students reacting too passively to teacher responses. As we have seen, it is sometimes difficult for a student to see such responses from the teachers as anything other than commands which have to be obeyed. Now remember, proofreading, remember, proofreading could be done by the teacher, but also by their own students. They can respond to their own tests. Yeah. Now you work in pairs of groups. Now give your paper to your partner and try to check. Try to give some ideas or suggestions or check some mistakes to your partner so they can do it together. But remember also with the help of the teacher, no? Because sometimes maybe the students don't know what to, they don't know what to correct, what to think. So you can give them some ideas, no? Or maybe you can give them an example, no? A model. So like a prototype, no? This is a model of the, of the test that you have written or you have to write. So you have to follow these things, these criteria. Yeah, and the students start checking each other, right? This is a peer review, no? Peer review. So the students do this kind of responding or checking the written test, all right? So notice, here we have these activities in order to respond 
and correct our students' work, our students' written test. And notice here that not just checking or correcting, so it's important to respond also, no? to give some ideas, some suggestions, not just in the grammar or lexical aspect, in the content, no? in the content of the test, right, and the type of language that they are going to use, no? and expressions that they could use. This is very important to remember. All right. So now I'm going to show you some web pages, yeah? as we have done all the classes. I'm going to show you some web pages that you can use with your students and also you, because you can use these uh, web pages to improve your writing skill too, not just your students. Let me see. Just give me a second. Um, <laughs> Oh, just give me a second. My laptop doesn't want to share. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Here it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, can you watch it? Yes, tell me, please. Because I couldn't share just a few minutes ago. Yeah, can you watch it? Yes? Yes, teacher, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is the first page that I'm going to show you. <clears throat> I'm going to put the link here in the chat. It's, this web page is related to the British Council. Here you can have a lot of material related to any skills. Yeah? As you can see here, you have courses, skills, grammar, vocabulary, exams. No? So you have a lot of things, magazine. So you have a lot, eh? you have a lot. But today we're going to focus on the writing. Here on this web page, as you can see here, it says practice and improve your writing skills for your school studies and your English exams. So your students can use this because they are like a lesson. There are activities for different levels. So find your level and make a start. So you have different levels, as you can see here. Beginner A1 writing, elementary A2 writing, intermediate B1, upper intermediate B2, advanced A1 writing. So you click on one of the levels. Eh? You click on one of the levels. And you choose a lesson. You have here some lessons to be completed, to be developed. Let's just start with the first. This is like an example. No? Look at the mail and do the exercises to practice and improve your writing skills. Eh? Instructions. <laughs> do the preparation exercise first, then read the email and do the other exercises. So you start reading eh? about my family. You have a test. Then you have checked your understanding. Eh? About my family, fill the gaps with a correct word from the box. Remember, when we talked about writing a skill, it doesn't mean that the lesson it must be just writing. We involve different skills. No? It's impossible to have a lesson with just one skill. No, it's impossible. It's not possible. When we talk about writing, it means that we are going to focus. We're going to reinforce more on the writing skills or sub skills. But we're going to use all the skills in some of the lesson we use all the skills reading listening writing and speaking but it means that we are going to focus on some specific writing skills or soft skills for example we start here with a reading skill after reading so now you have here checked your writing and check your writing gap feel again so write the correct word to fill the gaps use the words in brackets so you need to remember, no? You need to think, what would it be the correct word to complete that? So you start writing, eh? you start writing. Check your writing multiple choice. Here you have more activities. And also you have a feedback because you have finished, try again if it is correct, incorrect. Eh? And also you can download it. If your students don't have the opportunity to have access to computers, so here it says worksheets and downloads. And also you have a discussion part that you can make it 
internal activity or maybe a written activity too, no? So you can ask them, yeah, now talk to me about your family for one minute. Do you have a big family? All right, about your family for one minute, answering this question. So you adequate it, no? As I told you, you can adequate it. So notice here that you have the worksheets, okay? About my family exercises, the answers, the email, the writing practice. So you have a lot of materials here, all right? You can ask your students to do it by themselves using a computer, or you can give them as worksheets and you can develop it in class. Notice, and you have here a lot of lessons, a lot of lessons, all right? If we go back, you have different levels. No, this is from the first level, A1, basic level, about my family, applying for a job at a school, at the library, introducing yourself by email, introducing yourself on a blog, meeting friends, my family, so you have a lot. More than 10 lessons for each level. And then you can change the level. You have other students from other levels, elementary, A2. You have more lessons. Eh? As I told you, you can ask them to complete it online, no? online on the web page. Or you can print the materials. Again, you choose a lesson. <clears throat> Notice, this is the lesson. Top tips for writing. You don't need to write full sentences. Add extra punctuation marks. Use abbreviations. Use letters or numbers instead of words. Use symbols. So then you have the worksheets and materials. Eh? A chat. So here, they are going to chat. Notice what we saw in the previous slides, no? They are going to chat, collaborative writing. Eh? They are going to chat. Again, you have here, chat, writing practice. Let's see. Okay, notice here you have the framework. So with this framework, you print this framework and you give to your students and they are gonna start chatting. Eh? They are gonna start chatting. Similar to WhatsApp, no? Similar to WhatsApp. Yeah? So, again, here you have a lot of material. Yeah? You have a lot of material to use in your classes. All right? This is the first page, the British. And as I told you, you have here material for all the skills. Notice, speaking, listening, reading, writing. So, you have a lot. Yeah? You have a lot. Now, Let's pass to the other one. The other one, it's very common too. The name is write and improve. Yeah, remember, write and improve is from Cambridge. Maybe you have seen it or maybe you have used it before. Write and improve, this is a platform. You can use this free for students or for teachers. So here you're giving tasks. You're giving written tasks from different levels. Notice here on the left, beginner, intermediate, advanced, business, just for fun. So writing for writing, just for fun, because the other ones are for writing for learning because these tasks are usually given on the um, international examinations A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2. And also here you have related to a specific tasks that are um, taking an international examination as the ILTS or B2 first. <coughs> that is uh, international examinations. Let's start with the first one and notice you write something. Here it says, an email, a visit from a friend. Notice, I'm going to remark it, and you can notice here. An email, visit from a friend. Then you have the instructions. Notice, you have the instructions. Your friend Sam is coming to your house tomorrow evening. Write an email to Sam. Tell Sam three points. What time to come, what to bring, how to get to your house. Write 25 words or more. Notice you're 
us to write this information with these points and with a specific number of words. So as I told you, this is a similar task that they could find in an international examination. All right? Then notice you have the box that you can write your test. Below, you start writing. So I wrote something here. Yeah, I wrote it because as an example, yeah, I wrote something. Notice this is what I wrote. Hello, Sam. I'm so happy you're coming to my house. Come to my house at A, bring some soda, please. Stay bus number five. See you. Then notice on the other side, on the other side, uh, yeah. On the other side, you have the feedback. You're going to receive an immediate feedback. The program, the platform, is going to give you a feedback. Not you, not the teacher. The platform gives you the feedback. Notice. Your changes were good, but your score is the same. Read your writing again. Can you make some more changes? Try to improve your writing. Then click check again or return to workbooks and start a new task. Notice here, this platform use symbols. So this symbol of the star, suspicious word. Again, here, suspicious word. So notice, and you're giving a score to eh? five is the best. I got four. And you can correct it and you click here, check again. And you get a feedback. All right you get a feedback. So notice, and also you can check the time. If you want to uh, write with a limited time, so you start timer or reset timer, and then you receive your final score. So you can ask your students to use this platform because you can uh, sign up as a student or sign up as a teacher. If you sign up as a teacher, so you have the opportunity to create classes. And also you can give your students some workbooks and they can write something and then you receive the results. All right. So notice this platform is very interesting. Yeah. I advise you to use it. Remember the name, write and improve. This is from Cambridge. Yeah. This is from Cambridge. This is the second page. Then I'm going to show you another one. Uh, it was here. Yes, here. Read, write, think dot org. Here you have interactive written test. So you're going to write in an interactive way. Let's uh, start. Let's imagine. Remember that we talked about poems. No. <laughs> have you heard about a haiku? This is a poem that is uh, written, uh, usually written by Japanese people, no? Here says a little story of haiku. What is haiku? Haiku is a form of Japanese poetry. Traditional haiku are about nature, but can be about any topic. So you can, as your students write about any topic, and have a very specific syllable structure. The first line, has five syllables. The second line has seven syllables. And the last line has five syllables. Notice, three lines. It's a very short poem with just few words because you have to follow the number of syllables. First line, five syllables. Second line, seven syllables. And the last line, five syllables again. So five, uh, sorry, uh, yes, five, Seven, five. Remember, five, seven, five. Notice the example. Winter chills my soul. Numbing fingers, toes and bones. Soup for lunch today. Simple. Eh? Notice, it's very simple. A short poem. This is called haiku. Remember, haiku. So how to write a haiku? Notice here you have some ideas how to write a haiku. Be inspired. 
Go for a hike, walk, and be inspired by nature or the seasons. Use simple words to reflect your ideas and emotions. Feeling is the essence of writing a haiku. So you have to inspire by the nature. But remember, you can write about any topic. <laughs> syllable count. The traditional 575 syllable count is a great place to start when first writing haiku. Modern haiku can have fewer than 17 syllables and do not need to be three lines. As you become a more advanced haiku writer, feel free to let your inspiration guide you. And the last advice is the hamomen. Traditional haiku have a shift in the poem's imaginary, often as a result of a contrasting idea or image. This change in tone should still make sense with the overall theme. In the example, the last line is the aha moment in which soup, a hot food, is suddenly referred to after the imaginary of numbing gold. So this is related more to the imaginary aspect of poetry. But here, to make it simple, remember, so remember the structure of writing a poem. So you start. You write your name here or you're a student. Jose, this is my name. You start. Brainstorming. You can work this with your students too as a group. So maybe with your students, you can write a haiku. Not one by one with your students. Yeah, give me your ideas. We're going to write a haiku today. Brainstorm a list of words or phrases from your poem. Keep in mind that a haiku relies on a precise number of syllables per line. Record the number of syllables in your word or phrase here to help keep track. Let's see, mind they're going to talk about seasons. Yeah. One group write about a poem about the summer, another group about the winter, another group about the, <coughs> uh, the other spring. Yeah, and they start working together. No, they start working together. Yeah, so here you have, for example, summer, yeah, sun, hot, no, hot. Yeah. I notice you can write a number of syllables. So yeah, one, one. Uh, here, funny. Uh, here we have two. Eh? Note it's very important to keep a track of the syllables because remember the number of syllables. No? Remember the number of syllables. So, and so on. No? Then you have next. And with these words, you start writing your poem. The title, so summer, or oh, beautiful summer, or oh, wonderful summer, I don't know. And then you start writing the poem using the words that you have in the brain store. And you have also here the structure again of the haiku poem. Five, seven, five. So you start writing your poem, no? Five syllables, yeah. The sun, notice we have two, is re, uh, is Beautiful. Yes, then you have five syllables. Huh? Well, maybe you can uh, add more. It depends. Huh? Just to get the idea that um, the students are going to write a poem. Notice here. They are going to write a poem. And then, so here you are. Then you can see your poem. Now you can see your poem here. Haiku by Jose. Eh? Notice. Wonderful summer. And you can find a poem. So they can print it or they can change the background, they can change the test style. Notice you have here a lot of things to do. Notice how the letters are changed. Okay? So it's a funny activity to your students to start writing. And this is the poem. Here you have more. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, the time, the time, no. Remember what we done the last classes, the last lesson, the KWL, no? What they know, what they want to know, and they, what they learn. Then you have also another one, riddles, resume generator, story map, theme poems, timeline, Venn diagram. So you have a lot of things to write here. Literary graffiti, 
Letter. How to write letters. Notice we finish with this. Are you ready to write a letter? Here you can learn the parts of a letter and how to write your own letter. Again, here you write your name. Or you can view a sample letter. Notice here you have the sample letter. The heading, the salutation, the body, the closing, the signature. Now write your own. Friendly letter or business letter? Friendly letter. So type your street address. Notice they start writing the street address. Type your city, state, zip code. Remember to include a comma after your city and to abbreviate your state. Type the date, including the month, the date, and the year. Notice all the steps. Step one, the heading. Step two, salutation. The salutations is in the greeting. The year, and you write a name of the person you're writing to. A comma should be included after the name. The body. The body is the main part of the letter that tells what you have to say. You usually indent each paragraph and include a line of space between paragraphs. So it's the format, the style, the line out. Closing, step four, closing. The closing is used to end your letter. The closing can change depending on to whom you're writing. Here are some examples. Sincerely, your friend, with love, a comma is included after the closing. And then type your first name for that signature. A postscript, you have something to add. And then you can see, I didn't write anything, so you cannot see anything here, but you can print it, you can export it, you can save it. So you can ask your students to upload it and send it to you, to your WhatsApp, or you're using a platform. So you have the opportunity to see, notice they are using technology and they receive help because it's with the structure, no? Step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, and they can uh, receive some help to write. So this web page is so interesting. I'd advise you to use it a lot. Yeah? I'd advise you to use it a lot. And then I'm gonna give you um, a list of web pages because I have a lot more and you can see more of them because of the time I cannot show you more of them. All right. Well, that's all for today, my dear colleagues and friends. Before finishing with this class, I hope you the best in this new year because we're going to have the day's module on the 8th. Yeah. So the best for you in this new year, 2022. I hope that you can get all your dreams, all your wishes, all your goals, all your objectives, and the best for you and your family too. Okay, so see you next year. <laughs> see you next year, not next week, next year, and have fun. Please don't forget to celebrate New Year at home. Yeah, be careful with this pandemic situation. Yeah, please don't forget to celebrate it moderately. Yeah, well, thanks for all your attention. See you next time. Bye bye. Bye, teacher. Thank you. Bye, teacher. Thank you so much. Thank Happy you. New Year, everyone. Same Happy for New you. Year. Happy New 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 Year. Goodbye.